but there's a huge community of people that tried to speak out, especially during the COVID time. And they started blocking people. They started removing people, canceling people's accounts. And for a lot of people, a lot of normal people, their social media is their voice. And to lose that yeah. for speaking out, that was really tough. And now we're in a place where people are so scared to lose their accounts that we self-censor. And I think that's the scariest of part course. of all of it, the self-censorship. So how do well, you fight through point. that? I mean, this is obviously an extremely efficient police state that we have allowed to rise up around us. Extremely efficient, more efficient than anything the East Germans ever tried. Um, and, and that's terrifying and it's bad, but it's not enough to subdue a population. You can't actually subdue 350 million people. It's just not possible. You have to convince them to subdue themselves. And that's exactly what they're doing. You know, it's what there's a famous French phrase from the Algerian war it, it, it translated for the encouragement of the others. So you, you know, you've got a bunch of prisoners and you want them to give you information. You bring them up in a helicopter and you just push the first guy right out the door and he dies. And the other ones are very encouraged to, to tell what they know. And, um, and that's kind of what they always do. You know, they take some high profile person and they crush him and everyone else gets the message, which is shut up or be crushed. And I, I would disagree with you on one material point, which is I don't think that a lot of people stood up during COVID. I was mm. really embarrassed as an American to see the cowardice on display, the complacency on it. But really, let's just call it what it is. It's cowardice. It's shameful cowardice. And a lot of people I know, and in some cases love, were cowards. And I, I was probably a coward. You know, I should have said, I mean, I did a lot on COVID. I tried to be as honest as I could. But one thing I did not do was say that I'm, I didn't personally get the vax. And I should have done that. And my rationale was, well, it's a private decision. I'm not talking about my sex life. I'm not asking you about yours. I'm not going to ask or reveal private medical decisions. That was my position. But that's kind of fake, actually. There was a crisis going on. I had a position of, of visibility. And I should have said, you know, take the vax if you want. I'm not taking it because I'm really, really concerned about it. It's not tested. It can't have been tested. There's no longitudinal test that could have happened. And we don't have all the data, and it's a new technology that's never been tried at scale. Other coronavirus vaccines did not work. They were recalled because they hurt people. And this is also a gene technology, which seems a little bit spooky. I don't really understand it, but I'm not into it, and I don't want it on my body. All of that is true. None of that should be controversial. I should have said that day one. And I'm not telling you not to take it, but I am telling you you don't have to take it if you don't want to. And I didn't say that. I... Or I didn't connect it to myself and my own decision. And I think it, and I really regret that. And I think it would have helped if I had done that. Um, so whatever, do things like that. Just be honest. And like, yeah, maybe you get fired as someone who's been fired a lot, including when I didn't have enough money and too many children, which was obviously distressing and a hassle and scary. But, you know, it's kind of fine in the end, actually. And you, you retain your self-respect and maybe more important, the respect of your wife and children, which is essential, absolutely essential for family happiness. They have, you know, you've got to respect dad or it doesn't work. And um, so behave in a way that inspires respect and telling the truth is the number one way to do it, I think.